Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. Hello, podcast listeners. This is the episode you've all been waiting for. Uh, I mean, I'm excited, so this is going to be fun. Um, This is going to be our holiday gift guide. So we have compiled a bunch of fun stuff for you to spend your money on. (laughs) Or your family. Uh, Yeah, so uh, feel free to send this episode to someone. If you're a photographer, send it to someone who might be buying you gifts, and then they can listen to it and get some ideas for what to get you for Christmas. Uh, so a couple of disclaimers before we kind of go into this. First thing is there are no affiliate links here. We have not been paid to say anything. We are just recommending this stuff because it's cool or interesting or we like it and use it. Um, in the cases where it's something that we don't actually own and use ourselves, um, we have done our best to do different tiers and budgets. Um, for instance, monitors, we have a $200 version and like a $1,400 version. Um, so Buy the thing that's within your budget. That is kind of first and foremost. Uh, The second thing that we want to say about this list here is that um, mileage may vary. Um, We recommend that everyone have a good, nice, comfortable keyboard, for example. Mm -hmm. But there are some people that prefer, you know, the electronic kind. There are some people that prefer the mechanical kind. There are some people that need the ergonomic kind. So just because we make a recommendation doesn't mean the specific thing on there is the best for everyone kind of take it with a grain of salt this is two guys giving their opinions that's kind of the whole point of this show <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and, and thanks to uh listeners that have sent in their questions and recommendations for stuff um we did open this up and ask people what was on their lists and uh many of these uh things on the list are a result of that input so thank you so much for hitting us up and uh letting us know what you're looking at this holiday season Absolutely. So if you have any more questions or ideas, uh, we only have two more episodes coming out this year, and then we will continue in January and take a little holiday break. But uh, if you have future ideas, you can email us hello at photo-op.show. Without further ado, let's dive right in to the holiday gift guide. So first up, we're just going to start with something that is very fun and exciting, and it's something that I personally just bought. I have not used it yet because... Yeah, I bought it yesterday and (laughs) shipping, you know, how that works. Uh, It is the MyOps Smart Trigger. So, uh, there. oh, by the way, there are links to everything in the description. Um, We have tried to link directly to the deals as best we could, but by the time we record, to the time that we actually upload this, to the time that you actually listen to it, uh, there will be a lag and deals change. So there are some things on this list of like, go look at the thing, and there are some things on this list of, this is a deal. So um, where we could, we link to deals, but some things are just like, hey, this specific camera model is a really good one, Go, go look for a deal on that camera. Yep, exactly. So that that is that is kind of the final disclaimer. Okay, and now without further ado, <laughs> right? No more ado. I think we're done. Done with the adus. No ado. No ado. Okay. Uh, the MyOps Camera Smart Trigger. So this is a cool thing that just popped up as a Facebook ad, and the more and more I researched it, the more and more I said. This is cool and I want it. So uh, what it is, is it is a trigger for your camera that triggers based on a variety of different things. The most uh, exciting parts about it are that it can trigger when it senses lightning. So like when it basically is an optical trigger when it does flash and you can do multi, it can trigger multiple times and stack those images for you as well. Um, it can trigger, uh, if you shoot a laser beam into the sensor, whenever that beam gets broken. So, um, basically you can set up a motion censored thing. So if you're doing bird watching, then you can just set your camera on a tripod and, you know, get out a nice rum and Coke and sit by and, (laughs) and it will take the photo for you when the bird actually crosses into the camera path. Um, The other thing that it can do is trigger via sound. Um, You can also hook it up to external sensors if you want to get very DIY with it. And any of these sensors can trigger a trigger. So you can do motion and it can have millisecond delays built into it. So if you want to do like a 
a light bulb shattering or a bubble bursting. It's just it's just a very cool, odd thing. So we actually talked about not buying niche accessories in our last episode. <laughs> But uh, it's just a very cool thing. So if these are, th- if you have the budget for it, and these are things that sound fun and interesting to you, mm-hmm. it is gonna be fun to play with. I don't know if I'll ever use it for a client, but uh, I'm gonna have some fun yeah. with it. Well, and one of the things that we often say as well is. Um, don't buy stuff unless it's going to give you the capability to do something that you literally can't do with your existing equipment. And this is a good example of that. Of of a lot of things, things that this allows you to do are difficult and or impossible to do um yeah. with your standard gear set, i was so. i was at yellowstone a couple of weeks ago trying to i got caught in a lightning storm and i was trying to shoot pictures of the lightning and i think it was out there for like 20 minutes and i think i only able got like one photo with an actual lightning bolt in it yeah. so you know just just that alone is exciting if you are a landscape photographer who likes being out in those conditions but there's all the other stuff too so it's a cool thing i wanted to the list with a bang um and then so let's kind of dive into some of the 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 this next little section it doesn't have any specific thing these are just good stocking stuffers Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's start with uh reflectors so this is uh something that uh you know is super useful i mean it seems really boring but it's still very useful for both stills and video work um Thankfully, it's also pretty cheap. So like you said, this is some kind of stocking stuffers territory, although these won't necessarily fit in stocking stuffers or stockings very easily. Um, yeah, so- and that is the the newer reflector is what we're recommending for reflectors. You see these as newer five in one. Um, they've got uh, you see silver and gold sides. They've got white. Um, they've got black sometimes. Um, there are a bunch of different sizes and shapes of these, um, but you can get them for really cheap, like all, you know, around 10 bucks sometimes on sale. Um, yeah, I, I have some that are like 12 inches and yeah. I have some that are five or six feet. Yeah, so exactly. they definitely vary. Um, the one thing I will say about brand is they do not matter. Get mm-hmm. whatever one is on sale. They are all the same. The reason we recommend newer is because when I was researching these sales, newer is the only one that seems to actually have sales on Amazon. Yep. And we both so, own newer reflectors as well. <laughs> yeah. So so if you search for newer five-in-one reflector, mm-hmm. uh, get the one in the size of your choice. Yep. They're good. Gaff tape. So this is another uh, stocking stuffer that would actually fit in a stocking. And uh, again, it seems a little bit boring, but gaff tape is a wonderful thing. Uh, and it's expensive. It's very so expensive. So if you buy this for the photographer <laughs> in your life, they will appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. I guarantee it. It sounds really, boring. They, they would but appreciate you it over it. tape, but they they really would because uh, gaff tape is spendy. Um, one of the things that I have especially fallen in love with with gaff tape is one inch tape. Um, so I carry around uh, a little roll. I mean, it's it's literally like this big around a little roll of one inch uh, gaff tape. And I thought, oh, this is kind of silly. I usually use two inch stuff. Why would I even bother? But um, the nice thing about the one inch is it's really easy to just have in a little pocket in a bag and forget it's there. Um, and two, because you forget it's there, uh, you'll be at a shoot and you'll think, oh man, I wish I had a little bit of tape. Oh wait, I do. And then um, you'll have this great little one inch tape. I use the one inch gaff tape arguably more often than two inch at this point, which seems crazy to say, but it's just so handy to have on you. Um, that being said, two inch is the gold standard. Um, if you can have two inch, on you you should uh but yeah one inch i i actually <laughs> only own two inch so uh if my wife is listening to this i need some one inch gaff tape one inch gaff tape it's good <laughs> it really is uh, <laughs> next little tape is uh get some electrical tape so mm-hmm. i have a little hack for you um if you spend time with other photographers you should mark your equipment. So Stuart and I hang out and we both own the same brand C stand. Mm. If we hang out, we both have memory cards. Sometimes we're doing a shoot where I need to back up his memory card and we look down and we go, Oh shoot, is this your card or is this my card? Cause we, you know, have several different brands and that kind of thing. So electrical tape is small enough that you can easily mark 
all of your gear. So pick a color and brand all of your stuff with that color. Mm -hmm. I specifically have orange because no one else did. Um, actually, I think the reason I have orange is because I showed up on set one day uh, where there were, you know, six to ten other camera crew guys, and they already had the whole color spectrum picked out. And they said the only color that we have in tape right now that someone hasn't already picked is orange. So you're orange now. And he put a little orange strip of tape on all of my memory cards and all my batteries and all my chargers. And I'm just orange now. So pick <laughs> blue or green or yellow or whatever you want, but get a small roll of electrical tape and mark all of your stuff. So when you hang out with your photographer friends, you can get your stuff back. Excellent. Uh, moving on from some of the, uh, the grip gear, uh, this is a little bit more of a general category, but a good, uh, slash comfortable, uh, keyboard and mouse really. Yeah. This, uh, this whole category next is kind of like computer, computer gear. stuff. Um, yeah. so really a comfortable keyboard and mouse is a good keyboard and mouse. Uh, the price, um, and sh exact shape and features kind of don't matter as long as it works for you. Um, personally, I really like the, um, Logitech MX master series for mice. Um, I have a 2S. There are MX Master 3s out. They're basically the same, just USB-C versus USB micro. Um, so I really like those. And actually, you can get them for a fairly reasonable price a lot of the time. Um, they, I think their MSRP is around 100 bucks, but I never buy them for 100 bucks. I usually buy them for like 60-ish. Um, and on sale. you can probably find it on sale this weekend. <laughs> yes, and you almost certainly can. Um, keyboards, I bounce around a lot. Um, I do like mechanical keyboards right a bit. Uh, quite a bit, but right now I'm using, it's not really super great, so I don't recommend it, but it works well <laughs> enough. Um, it's the one I, that's on your desk. It's the one that's on my desk, uh, but it's just kind of janky. And uh, personally, just go to Logitech's website and get something that looks good to you. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of the Microsoft peripherals, um, they're kind of a dark horse in the peripheral world. They make some really legitimately good mice and keyboards, um, and a lot of people don't think about them. So I would take a look at that. Even if you don't like Microsoft for other things, they make some solid peripherals. Uh, so take a look at them as well. So Logitech and Microsoft is where I go for peripheral recommendations or for my own use. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So uh, the thing that you will be spending all of your time staring at monitors. Yes. So we already <laughs> mentioned we have a few different budgets of monitors here, but mm -hmm. uh, Stuart, take it away. Um, yeah. So I have two LG recommendations and then an Asus recommendation here. And actually, uh, LG might make the actual panel for the Asus as well. So it might be three LG recommendations. LG is one of the main uh, panel manufacturers. A lot of uh, b uh, companies just buy their panels from them and rebrand them. Um, so the first one I have um, is at Adorama, uh, at least this particular one uh, that I found under $200. Um, it's the 27ML600. It's just an, a great uh, uh, 1080p monitor for under 200 bucks. Um, it should look nice. Um, color calibration should be pretty good out of the box and it should calibrate very easily. It's just a solid monitor for the money. The next step up is where I would really put most people. Um, this is the LG 27 UK 850. Um, they also make a slightly cheaper version that is not HDR ready. This one's HDR ready, which is just kind of nice for um, video editing and stuff like that. Uh, this one's around 450 bucks, uh, and it's a 27 inch, uh, 1440 P panel. Um, and it's just, uh, also really good. Um, I use one of these, Oh, sorry, this is a 4k panel. Um, my mistake, the cheaper one is a 1440 P, but this is a great monitor. I have one of these, uh, they're beautiful. They're quite reasonably priced. 450 seems like a lot, but this is actually very good for what it is. Um, you see a lot of gamers using these and don't be scared away by that. Um, it just has a really low refresh rate, which they tend to like um, a lot of the time. So uh, definitely take a look at that. Um, otherwise, the uh, big, <laughs> beautiful one is the Asus ProArt series. Um, Asus has been making the ProArt series of monitors for quite a while. Um, they pretty much are always extremely good and monitors that I wish I had. Uh, this particular one is a 32-inch 4K panel. Um, it's HDR ready. It has great coverage of the Adobe RGB spectrum, um, pretty much the entire thing at 99.5%, I think. Uh, it's just awesome. It's a beautiful panel, super color accurate, high resolution, 
um, it's just excellent. So it's also fourteen hundred dollars. So it should be excellent, <laughs> excellent for that amount of money. Uh, but yeah, Asus Pro Art. So an, a two LGs and maybe an LG behind an Asus uh, logo. Uh, but don't quote me on that one. In any case, Pro Arts are awesome if you can afford them. Monitors. There you go. <laughs> monitors. All right. And to go along with monitors, monitor calibration. So as you mentioned, mm-hmm. monitors come calibrated right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Um, most good modern monitors are gonna look excellent Mm -hmm. so i remember um that the advice used to be everyone own a monitor calibrator everyone own a monitor calibrator and i had a really really crappy um monitor that i think i got for like 90 dollars at best buy Mm -hmm. and and i calibrated it and it just blew my mind because it changed (laughs) so much i'm like wow this looks good now and now if you buy a cheap monitor and calibrate it, it probably won't change that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing that I actually do recommend for uh, monitor calibration is uh, your ambient light. Yes. So if you have a bunch of light bulbs or windows or anything like that in your room, you should calibrate your monitors because your eyes in the ambient light are going to adjust. Mm-hmm. Um and the 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 big the big uh, controversy, I guess, I've rebuttal that uh, people have said to not buying monitor calibration is that well, everyone's looking at on something different anyway. It looks different on your iPhone versus your desktop versus your laptop. Why bother? Well, if you have the best starting point, that means it'll look good in the most places. Versus mm-hmm. if you start in a bad spot, then it changes wildly. Mm-hmm. Um, I have I have uh, definitely sent some clients some edits and then they just edit it themselves on God knows what and then it they post it and it looks wildly off. Plus, the industry really is catching up. A lot of phones and tablets um, and and even laptops uh, are getting really really good panels. Um, that's one of the things that I have to give Apple a lot of credit for is they they kind of raise the bar with putting increasingly good panels in a lot of their stuff. Um, and that's the rest of the industry is kind of following that. So um, it's uh, it, it's not the it's increasingly not the hugely varied landscape of quality it once was. The, yes. the whole industry is moving toward better panels, um, even just for consumer products. So, so all of that caveats being said, Stuart and I both own monitor calibrations. Yes. <laughs> and when I have worked in commercial studios, we cal- calibrated uh, our monitors every single week. Mm-hmm. So um, there are two ones that I have used, whether uh, I own it or in studio. Uh, the first one is the uh, Spider by Data Color, mm-hmm. um, which I think you actually have right there I on your desk. I have one right you here. You have one. Mine is a much <laughs> older model, but it's it does the same thing. Yeah, this is the Spider uh, X Pro. So those are on sale right now. Um, we put a B and H link. Um, but the other one that I've used in a bunch of studios is uh, made by X Right, and it is called the i One Display. Also very so, good. So, so they're both pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. They both are pretty much the same price. They both have base models and then more expensive ones with more features. Yep. Just kind of look at those and look at the like what what works best for you. They're kind of identical-ish. Yeah, the only um, reason I bought the Spider yeah. X Pro is because it was on sale at the time. Like <laughs> I have no brand loyalty with with monitor calibrators as long as they do their job. Cool. Yep. So we put links to both of those down there. So uh, if you have a much older monitor, this is absolutely imperative. Mm-hmm. Do it. Uh, yep. Either buy a new monitor or buy a monitor calibrator. Yep. Uh, but we have those for you down in the description. Um, all right. What other computer stuff do we have? Uh, well, certainly storage slash backup. Um, network attached storage specifically can be super helpful. Um, you you must have a backup solution. If you don't have a backup solution, you will lose data. It is not a question of if, but when. Um, and having uh, some sort of... I actually did a video on that, yes. which we will link. <laughs> having some sort of uh, network attached storage is not required but it is very nice uh, backup is required you need that um, but network attached storage is is highly recommended both of us have network attached storage solutions um, that we use every day and they're excellent um, I know uh, you and uh, I know you own a Synology I used to own a Synology um, Synology is my go-to uh, recommendation their software is very good um, their software is good they're cheaper than yeah, other they're, solutions they're quite and inexpensive. they don't propose 
proprietary format your hard drive yeah so if something goes belly up with the system you are not beholden to synology you can just get it fixed yeah synology is excellent it's my go-to recommendation i've tried other ones i know a lot of people like qnap and other brands like that um just go for the synology it really is the best uh best pre-built um i moved from synology to building my own rigs um i use because you're of, a crazy yeah because i'm crazy i use a piece of software <laughs> called unraid uh to run my uh network attached storage right now it's really awesome if you're handy and you like computers uh definitely build your own i and went you want overboard. a petabyte yeah i went overboard and i literally have a <laughs> server rack that runs all my stuff and i have like 200 terabytes of storage in it or something that's all redundant and backed up and all that fun stuff so look at unraid because unraid is awesome um and uh if you don't want to spend a bunch of time and brain power on that which is totally reasonable buy a synology i used to own one they're still awesome i still recommend them uh yeah. for backup so was, yeah oh, sorry, some other backup solutions i yeah. was gonna mention um backblaze and yes. amazon are the two that uh we kind of go to so mm -hmm. i know that you also have a business uh google plus that you i do use. <clears throat> i do so uh, um, yeah, so we'll, let's let's kind of talk through the differences here. Sure thing. So so <laughs> Amazon, um, you already have Amazon Prime mm -hmm. because of course you do. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have Amazon Prime, you have free unlimited JPEG storage. So I think they do RAW as well now, right? They, maybe. Yeah. D don't quote me on that, <laughs> but but maybe free photo storage. We'll Google put it, it that way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Google it. So you can put all of your photos and back that up on Amazon. I have so much data up there. If you put any like files or video or anything like that, I think free, you only get like five gigs, which is basically yeah, nothing. Um, but I use that for JPEG delivery for just huge data dumps uh, for like business clients and stuff like that. Um, Backblaze is not online storage. It mm -hmm. is, however, um, seamless in the background. You pay for it once and forget about it mm -hmm. online backup. Yeah. Uh, and the beautiful thing about Backblaze is that um, if you crash or when you crash, you can download your stuff for free as a zip or for a small fee, they send you a hard drive. And if you send the hard drive back, they refund 100% of that fee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's basically like three-ish dollars a month um, is an incredible deal. I yep. recommend it to literally everyone, even if you have a different um, backup system. The one downside to Backblaze is that it will not back up uh, network attached storage NAS systems. Yes. Uh, there, there are other ones that do, but they're way more expensive. Yeah, so Backblaze, I still recommend Backblaze. Backblaze is super cheap um, and, and truly is unlimited. I have somewhere around 14 terabytes backed up with them right now. Um, and yeah, they just keep taking more and more and more. And that's built into their uh, into their business model. Um, they're a very nice company to deal with. They're very public about how their finances work and their kind of long-term vision for um, making this sustainable, uh, which it is sustainable. Um, so that's always nice to see too with a backup company that they care about that vision and they don't, they don't, they're not just focused on selling to the highest bidder. <laughs> Backblaze is awesome, and I recommend them to anybody that needs backup. Yes, um, if you need backup, whether you are a photographer with terabytes of stuff or you just want to make sure you don't lose your tax documents next year, um, this is the one time we have an affiliate link. Go down. If you click on our link rather than Googling it, uh, you get some free stuff. I think it's like a free month. or It's a free month, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, use our link, get a free month to it, and um, en enjoy yeah. peace of mind. Okay, yep. so uh, you had a couple other backups, yeah. Smuglog and Flickr. Yep, so um, as you might have heard, uh, Google Photos is eliminating their um, free photo backup. Um, they used to let you uh, upload uh, uh, unlimited quantities of slightly compressed um, images. They basically compressed it to a 16 megapixel JPEG if it was any bigger than that. Um, that was really cool, and I unfortunately recommended that to a lot of people um, as somewhere to park their images um, if they needed just i mean grant it's not a high quality backup but if they needed something um mm. that was a, a good way to go because it was there are totally definitely free. some images that i yeah. lost in college that i wish i would have yeah. had it's something be it's better than nothing right and it's totally free now uh they are eliminating that so you're gonna have to buy storage from them um these two options are paid but they are unlimited quantity photo backups um, including raw images and that is smug mug and flicker 
They're both owned by the same company. Flickr was uh, purchased by Smug Mug a couple years ago. Um, Smug Mug, Mug is more of the, like, you can build a photo website and sell prints and stuff. And Flickr is, you know, more social. Um, but they are owned by the same company and they're similar in price. And you can back up an unlimited quantity of untouched images to them if you so desire. But if you're putting images somewhere, Smug Mug, Flickr, Backblaze, Amazon, you've got options. All right, so we've talked about looking at stuff. So let's talk about creating some stuff. Yeah. So um, graphics tablets. Yeah, graphics tablets are awesome. Um, this is something that a lot of people overlook, and they are super cool. I've used. I a have not of them used a mouse years. in years. <laughs> yeah, I still use a mouse, um, but I do use uh, graphics tablets as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> so so graphics tablets basically hands down. I recommend Wacom. Yeah. They are just the best period. Mm -hmm. So right now, Wacom is doing a deal on their site for refurbished tablets, which Should still I mean, be perfectly is great. better than nothing. Yeah. So um, the one that I recommend is actually the Intuos Pro Medium. The small is just far too small for you to actually like get any use out of it, even though I got really good at using a very tiny bamboo one for many years. Yeah. Um, but, and the large is just too large to fit on your desk. So the medium is kind of the perfect go to tablet size um you can get 30 dollars off on their refurbished um or if you have a, a spicy budget um you can go with the wacom wacom cintiq which is a screen that you can draw directly on and you can get a refurbished one for 180 dollars off which makes that a really attractive deal um yep. it's tempting they are awesome um they're definitely the go-to uh if you can afford it if you're super on a budget but you do need a graphics tablet that's good but not quite as good as the wacom's um the huion huion i don't know how to pronounce it uh in um tablets are uh, quite good i actually own one i bought one when it was like on a super cheap sale like it was 60 bucks off of you know, versus like $100 or something. Um, so you can get these well, well under $100 for a pretty good size. They perform quite well. But they've they have got a small all the discount right now, and too. And so. they've got a little discount right now. So, um, And they're available all over the place. And we've got their website linked, too. So if you were really on a tight budget, that might be something worth looking at. All right, we talked about NAS, but we didn't talk about what to fill your NAS up with. Yes. Um, so let's, let's talk hard drives. <laughs> uh, hard drives. Um, so this is... Uh, this is the, the pretty much the only recommendation that I ever tell people, which is buy Western Digital Elements or Easy Store external drives and shuck them. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, these are really the exact same drive. They are just different names for uh, different uh, retailers. The Elements drives are sold by Amazon, and the Easy Store drives are sold by Best Buy. They might have different casing, different branding, but trust me, they are literally the same drive underneath. Um, they're basically, uh, these are basically network attached storage drives that there are made in huge quantities um, for, you know, big bulk discounts. And uh, instead of buying the bare drive for like $300, you can buy the uh, same drive in a plastic housing for like $180 instead. Yeah. Uh, which is dumb, but that's just how it works. That's how and these then, so yeah, you basically just, scale work. you just shuck the stupid little computer chip and the plastic casing exactly. and you have a beautiful new drive that you can slap into your computer or yeah. your NAS. Yeah, exactly. So shucking just refers to taking the pearl that is the uh, hard drive outside uh, uh, out of the outer casing uh, that is just out of plastic the shell. Yeah. out of the shell um, which you can just break if you don't mind if if you don't mind the possibility that you won't get warranty coverage um, or you can be really careful and insert uh, little plastic uh, like guitar picks and stuff to open it carefully. There are lots of videos about this um, out there. So just search for whichever one you buy, um, you know, whether that it's model easy store. And shucking. Yep, exactly. Just like easy store shuck uh, on YouTube and you'll find many videos showing you exactly how to do it. I have done this dozens of times. It sounds dodgy. It really is not. <laughs> like, trust me, yep. I've done this many, many, many times, and it has always worked out perfectly. Um, just test the drives. Plug them in while they're still in their housings. Test them before you shuck them, just in case they're dead on arrival. Um, but after that point, you're good to go. 
Cool. So, so uh, we talked about computer storage. Let's talk about camera storage, memory yeah. cards. What yes. you got for me? Uh, the Samsung Evo Select is pretty much all I recommend, except for very specific uh, circumstances nowadays. Samsung uh, makes their own memory, so they're really good. You know, the quality is going to be good. And these cards are just so cheap. Um, and perform extremely well, even for 4K video, you know, high bitrate kind of stuff. Um, the right now, the price on uh, Amazon for the Evo Selects is for a 128 gig card. It's sixteen dollars for 256 card. It's uh, 256 gig card is twenty five dollars, and for the fancy 512 gig card, it's sixty five dollars, which is just like nutty. Like for basically just barely over a hundred dollars i'm still you get a running, terabyte of storage i'm still running 32 <laughs> gig cards that i remember paying about 200 dollars a piece for right it's it's crazy how cheap these are and these are micro sd so you can throw these in a lot of phones you can throw them in a gopro you can uh use them like how i use them is i put them in the standard size sd card adapters which they come with by the way and put them in my um sony uh, alpha 7 III. so you can uh the the brilliance of this form factor is you can use it in all sorts of different stuff this is of course not uh perfect for every single camera out there but for most cameras these days that you're going to buy um just buy the micro sd cards um they're so cheap and awesome and uh plenty fast for what you're going to do awesome next up we're switching it up a little bit for those of you who are doing video or mm -hmm. if you do a lot of photo compositing i have a great recommendation for you it is a stock footage asset library called busy box box with two x's so uh, this is an online library that i purchased about two months ago um, the one downside I will say is that they don't expect you to download the whole library. They cut you off after a couple of videos. <laughs> um, they expect you to just go download the assets as you need to use them. Um, so that's been annoying for me personally, but no, it's, it's a great asset library. They give you like a terabyte worth of stuff for like 30 bucks. And these are high quality 4k slow-mo assets. You've got bokeh, you've got fire, you've got powder explosions, you've got glitter. It's just so much stuff that you can use to, uh, you can grab a still frame from these video assets and you basically have an infinite amount of stock footage that you can use for compositing into your photos now. Or, of course, if you're a video editor, just use the videos. They are super high quality assets. I bought them. I'm super happy with them. So I wanted to add them to this list. Good stuff. All righty. So let's talk about lighting. Mm -hmm. So uh, lighting, this is a <laughs> seems like a throwaway answer, but it really isn't. Um, if you're looking for, uh, you know, getting started, uh, you're getting into speed lights, um, and you want some, you want something that's good but not expensive. Uh, pretty much anything Godox is the mm -hmm. way to go uh, nowadays. Godox is their quality is already super good and continues to get better all the time they've got a great wireless system that performs super well through walls at long distances um, their triggers are inexpensive uh, it's just a, an awesome system that you're buying into and everything kind of is intercompatible so uh, you can grow with this you can use your speed lights as you upgrade into strobes and stuff like that so anything godox or um, if you're buying from adorama the same stuff is called flashpoint there a lot of the time uh, and uh, that's also that literally is just godox with a different name um, all of those are also still intercompatible with normal godox gear you can mix and match um, i own several um, godox slash uh, flashpoint speed lights and a trigger and uh, they're awesome and they work uh, perfectly every time and someday maybe i'll uh, get more serious about lighting we've talked about doing some videos on yeah. uh, teaching this video guy how to do uh, stills lighting maybe we'll do that sometime here pretty soon but godox is awesome yong nuo used to be my recommendation yeah so um, anyone but yeah I'll, Godox I'll, I'll kind of cut in here. Now. Anyone who's a longtime listener and has watched my uh, Amazon Speedlight review, which turned mm -hmm. into Please Buy Yong Nuo, that was a <laughs> weird flip. Uh, yeah. But there's there's a story about that one. At, at, not not today. Anyway, so if you've watched <laughs> that, I say just buy this Yong Nuo. Well, mm -hmm. that was done a while ago. Yeah. Times change. Technology mm -hmm. updates. At the time, Godox was not as good yet, and it was still far too expensive. Mm -hmm. But now they've gotten better, and they've dropped their prices. So Godox is still more expensive than the a flash that I recommend in that video. However, with all the additional features that it brings to the table, it is worth it. So it's at so this it. current day, 2020, Black Friday, yeah, just 
Godox, Flashpoint, it's it's great. Um, anything more expensive than that, you don't need this guide. You already know what you're buying. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, so if you are buying speed lights, you should buy gels. Yes. So if you want to do a bunch of cool stuff, if, even if you just want to match the ambient light in a room by putting a CTO orange gel onto it, then, um, yeah, that's one thing. Or you can do cool things by adding, like, blues and greens and purples and getting creative with your lighting. So I absolutely recommend getting the Roscoe Strobist Pack. So those are your normal gels, except they're cut really, really small, and there's a huge variety of them, so it is specifically sized for big, just generic use speed lights. So those are great, and then you can um, either look at my video, which I will put below on how to do super cheap gel holders, or just tape them on as is, or, you know, Velcro, what have you. But um, yeah, Roscoe, Roscoe Strobist uh, Gel Pack is a good good thing uh the very last thing in our lighting category are v flats mm -hmm. so our bonus q a episode that we just posted someone asked how to do cheap v flats you absolutely can but they're a little dysfunctional hard to travel and they don't look great if you want something that is easy to travel functional out of the box and looks amazing uh, and slick and professional and makes you look like the pro photographer that you are um v flat i think it's v flat world um, we'll put a link down too. They make a uh, collapsible V flat that just works. They're super expensive, but like if you need V flats and you have the space for them, it's it's worth it. So uh, we will have that linked below as well. Now we get into the cameras. Oh, time! Yeah. It, we're getting there to the main event. We are going to start with um, action cameras. Action cameras. Uh, so GoPro is very much my recommendation um i have shot with action cameras for a long time um i still shoot with them very frequently there are some other options depending on what you're doing you know dji makes one but uh, i say don't bother with it it's not that all great. the comparison videos yeah. i've ever seen have been like are they good yeah they're, yeah, they're okay fine. but gopro still better <laughs> yeah so, um or if you need really specific yeah. like 360 stuff you know insta 360 totally is a great option there but the main event really is gopro um and it's between the gopro hero 8 and hero 9 which just came out um the hero 9 has some higher uh resolution stills capability it's got some really awesome extra stabilization which is surprisingly good i really had low uh expectations for gopro's electronic stabilization and it legitimately is really impressive um but the hero 8 is still really good and it's really a toss-up like with with video the low light performance between both of the cameras is so close that it's just a question of if you need some of the extra stuff the hero 9 offers or if you want to save some money and go with the hero 8 the hero 8 is still spectacular as an action camera dude i'm still running a hero go for 4 it. Oh yeah, I mean they 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 have a long GoPros have long legs on them. They do well for a long period of time. But if you're buying new, uh, take a look at uh, at the features between both of them, and I would say probably buy the Hero Eight. Like in ninety percent of the situations right now, buy the Hero Eight. Only buy the Hero Nine if you really need that uh, those high resolution stills and um, some of those stabilization features. So that's uh, awesome. my recommendation. All right, we only have two categories left, yes. lenses and cameras. So take a quick breather. Whew. All right, <laughs> so uh, b before we dive into lenses here, what we're going to say about lenses is we have no specific recommendations. Mm -hmm. So uh, here are generic recommendations for lenses. Um, if you are looking for budget... Uh, Okay, so if you're looking for an expensive lens, you already know the one that you're going to get. You don't need this gift guide. Yep. Um, if you are looking for cheaper lenses, we have already talked about in our last episode the ones that just suck to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking for kind of like a good travel lens, if you don't have a huge budget to buy like an all-in-one lens or that, you know, 24 to 70, you know, expensive, you know, name brand one – your kit lens works. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Kit lenses are great, especially when you're starting out. They're cheap. They're cheerful. 
uh, and they really perform, especially modern kit lenses, perform pretty well. There, there was a, a time when kit lenses were a little bit more dodgy, but nowadays they are pretty the darn good. The one thing that I would say is um, probably don't buy a kit lens. Just mm -hmm. have a yeah, kit lens because camera. it came with your kit. Yeah. Um, if you're specifically going out to buy more lenses, buy buy something better yeah. um but yeah. if it already came with the camera cool you don't need to throw out a kit lens kit lenses get the job done mm -hmm. um the other thing that we would say is if you fell in love with let's say the canon 50 one two well mm -hmm. you know what the one four or the one eight are a fraction of the price mm -hmm. and they look good too yep. um the canon uh 85 mil what is it one two yeah, that mm. one I've used before. It's it's super huge. It is really heavy. It is crazy expensive. And if you don't have your model looking dead nose straight into the camera, they're going to be completely out of focus. Um, <laughs> that and focus plane you is can't real have thin. Them <laughs> yeah, you can't have them tilt their head at all. Well, guess what? If you're not going to shoot at 1.2 for that specific look, then you're stopping down to 1.8 or 2 buy the one eight and save yourself thousand dollars mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah prime lenses excellent uh zoom lenses that open up to like two eight excellent mm -hmm. um just buy the lens that kind of fits the thing that you need we have an episode on what lens to buy um go go watch that one instead and yep. get more specific about the kind of photography that you do and um buy those lenses and and right now uh the expensive lenses are probably going to be like a hundred dollars off so yeah it's yep. like a two grand lens but you save a hundred bucks and the cheaper lenses might be you know twenty thirty dollars off like there are sales on lenses right now i guarantee you but go find the lens that you're looking for and then i uh b and h adorama uh, keh if you uh like to buy used all of those are going to have deals right now yep lightning round budget cameras Ooh. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so we have a little uh, a little collection of uh, camera brands for you today. This is not an exhaustive list, but it's kind of our general recommendations for uh, cameras to buy. Uh, I shoot Sony, so here's some Sonys. The Sony A6000 is a few years old now, but it's still, or Alpha 6000, it's still really good. Um, it can be spectacularly cheap, like under 500 bucks. Um, it still is awesome for the price or if you've got a little bit, bit of more money then um, buy whatever a or alpha 6000 family uh, camera works for you there's a like six, a 60, whatever 364 65 just buy whichever one fits your budget if you want to step up to the big leagues, uh, <laughs> which uh, is uh, kind of a misnomer because I shot with the A6000 series a lot, and it's awesome. Um, the A7 II or A7 III, which is the camera I, sh uh, I shoot with right now most of the time, are both awesome. If you can stretch for the three, go for it because it's super performant video and stills are awesome and it's dropping under the $1,500 mark. So yes, it's not true budget like that. It's a few hundred dollars, but for the performance, it is fantastic. Also, um, if you are buying a it. first camera, yeah. please understand cameras are expensive. Yes. When someone asks me, Hey, I need a camera under $200. I have no recommendations for you. No sub 500 is the cheapest of the cheap. If you've never bought a camera for, that's the best you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and most cameras are, you're looking at a thousand. My cameras are over 3000. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. perspective. Yep. We're, exactly. Let's start there. Yeah. <laughs> so for $1,500, even though that sounds crazy, that's actually legitimately a good, a good deal. deal for what the a 7 can do. And actually the videographers that I work with whenever I shoot weddings, most of them are shooting a seven three. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's expensive and they got a fleet of them, but it gets the job done. Oh, um, and still, I still really good. I was yeah. shooting in an aquarium and we went into one of their like dark underwater rooms and I said, give me a sec. I need to go get my speed light. And he's like, no, I'm fine. I'm, yep. I'm good. <laughs> I've got my Sony a seven three. I'm like, well, aren't you fancy? So no, they, <laughs> They're they are worth it. Uh, in the Nikon world, um, the D3500 or 5600, depending on your budget, those are both around $500. About $100 separates both of them. Um, and then uh, the the step up from that would probably be the Nikon Z6 or Z6, depending on where you are in the world. It's about the same price as the a7 III, 1500-ish, and it's their uh, mirrorless offering. Or it is a mirrorless offering. They have a bunch of cameras in that line, but this is the, uh, the budget one. option um, in that uh, in that 
that line around the same price point. So that's Nikon. Awesome. Let's talk Canon. Yeah. So um, the Canon Rebel right now is the Rebel SL3 or the uh, 250D. 250D. Um, I think that's the same to- just depending it is. on where, you, the where market. you are. Yeah. Yeah. Just different names. Um, if you were looking for a step up from that, uh, the, their flagship going around right now is the 60 Mark II. Mm-hmm. Um, can't, can't go wrong. Yeah. Um, if you want to get mirrorless, all the rage right now is the EOS R, which is yep. the Canon mirrorless series. Um, I personally uh, don't have any of these cameras, but my first camera was an old Canon Rebel. Um, and then instead of a 6D, I have the 5D. And um, instead of the mirrorless, I actually have the Panasonic mirrorless mm-hmm. for for reasons that we'll get into right now. Let's talk Panasonic. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh- Panasonic uh, yeah. is, I mean, very video focused. Um, it is. So, and that's, uh, wh- that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You generally don't buy a Panasonic for stills, although they do stills fairly competently. Um, the, they do it admirably. Yeah. They do. The, the, my recommendation for Panasonic is uh, the GH4 or really the GH5. Um, GH4, the, if you're really cramped if you're on a budget. super on a budget, it still performs GH5 quite well. GH5 is just better. Yeah, the GH5 is better in every way. It's, again, around the same price as the a7 III. I'm just trying to do a $1,500 category for uh, everybody. And, uh, yeah, if you can swing the GH5, um, you can do extremely impressive video uh, on that camera. So that is definitely right my recommendation the, the one that i actually bought um i'm seeing kits go on sale again so mm-hmm. i'll mention that as well yep. i think it is the g85 yes so so that is a panasonic mirrorless camera um i bought it for about 600 dollars. your mileage may vary with sales right now mm-hmm. um but that was hey i'm getting a super cheap budget camera but i need mm-hmm. slow-mo and 4k and a tiny form factor and a flip out screen and so it has all yep. the things that you're looking for um yeah the g85 a very is, cheap price the g85 is awesome it's basically a mini gh5 it just does uh 30 fps for 4k instead of 60 fps um it is cheap and cheerful and really a great camera even as a primary camera um it is awesome for video so don't be scared away by the price i shot i shot pretty much everything on my yellowstone and glacier national park trip um even still just testing it out and it it worked pretty great so yeah that's a nice little che- if you're video focused mm-hmm. but it, it can also do stills so yep. that that is a cheaper version of the gh5 um, all right, we got a couple of other off brands that we'll mention. Go, f- oh, go for off it. brands. You're gonna I offend think... some people. <laughs> you know so... what? You know what? <laughs> Fine. Uh, I don't care. I-, I can't help but like uh, Pentax. Um, they keep soldiering on, and they seem to have great cameras. I've kind of wanted to buy one, although I've never really had a good reason to. But I still like their spirit, if that makes any sense. <laughs> the Pentax KP is where I would go for um, the budget choice right now. Um, it's definitely under a thousand bucks, around six seven hundred dollars. Uh, by all accounts it is an awesome camera i just don't own one but i wanted to give them a shout out because i just respect them for some reason (laughs) uh in the olympus world uh the omd uh, e mark 10 or em 10 excuse me mark 234 whatever fits your budget um that goes from you know around the five six hundred dollar mark to um you know up around a thousand over a thousand bucks uh olympus uh to my knowledge uh if i'm unless i'm remembering miss uh incorrectly is getting out of the game um they sold them uh their camera division off uh to an investment firm and they might no longer be around uh that being said olympus cameras are really nice uh extremely solidly built they've got great kind of retro aesthetics and their uh in-body image stabilization is almost second to none like they're just super fantastic um in the stabilization department so it still might be worth buying uh, olympus cameras at least for a little while um if you need some of their particular features or you just like the camera and you're okay with the platform potentially going away someday yeah the one reason that i'm going to call those off brand and stand by (laughs) it is when you look at adapters or lenses or you know third parties Mm -hmm. that um like sigma sigma Mm -hmm. does not make camera bodies but they make great lenses Mm -hmm. well what bodies do they make those lenses for it's not pentax yeah yeah (laughs) that's fair that's fair uh but still (laughs) there's some extra options for you 
Um, yeah, so that's our uh, those are our budget camera picks. Um, hopefully that helps uh, illuminate you. I realize there are a bunch of different options in there. If you have literally nothing, it might be hard to choose. Um, really, you just have to kind of look through and see which ones you like the look of and you like the features of. Here's something else um, that I would say before yeah. you add one to your list. Walk into your local camera shop. Hold each one in your hand mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there is a very different feel between a Canon camera and a Nikon camera. Mm -hmm. One feels more electronic. The other feels more mechanical. There's yep. a very different feel between a full-size DSLR, a, a crop sensor DSLR, and a mirrorless. Mm -hmm. One might just fit nice in your hand. One might be too bulky. One might feel too small and flimsy. Mm -hmm. This is 100% personal preference. Hold them in your hand. Find the the one that you like. Um, my other camera advice still goes, uh, stick with a brand that all of your friends own so you can borrow or steal their stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a smart investment so that you can kind of swap gear as needed. Um, but yes, hold them in your hand, find the one that kind of speaks to you, and then kind of stick with that brand because once you buy in, it's very hard to switch yep good stuff so that has been our holiday a uh, gift guide uh thank you so much for listening 2020 we've got, edition yeah 2020 edition uh we've got a couple more shows left in the year and then we're going to take a short break until we return in january so we'll see you next week and then the week after that um and uh again thanks for listening hope this helped and if you've got any uh questions or comments definitely shoot us an email Take a look at the description for all the links, and we will see you next time. There are so many links. <laughs> if you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at non-creative. As in om nom nom. Share this with a friend, and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or download it. Because it's free.